Good day, ladies and gentlemen. The moment you've been waiting for has arrived. Today, MathEd is taking on the unbeatable science kids. This quiz will show what those science kids have learned this year. Who will come out on top? Let's ask some of our viewers what they think. I predict that the math that I will come out on the top. Wait just one minute. Are these those kids that keep getting on my lawn? I hope Math Dad stomps them into the ground. Oh, this is so exciting. I don't even know who to cheer for. We have been monitoring your planet for a long time. It is our conclusion that Math Dad will cruise to victory. Oh, 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 oh. Who will win? It all depends on whether they stay off the naughty list. That Math Dad is too overconfident. Wait, isn't Math Dad the guy who thinks that the answer is always Marmoset? Oh, Math Dad is so dreamy. My crystal ball shows that Math Dad is destined to win. The science kids will win for sure. Math Dad does not seem to understand the word unbeatable. Arg! This be the end for the unbeatable science kids. And there you have it, folks. Math Dad is the overwhelming favorite. Can the underdog unbeatable science kids pull off an upset? Let's find out. Oh, wow. You overdid it that time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, it's quiz time today. It is quiz time. And if you have enjoyed watching these videos, having an entire Earth Science course with notes that are freely available to anybody, then we have to take a moment to give a shout out to our registered students who are watching live right now and to our patrons on Patreon, because we wouldn't have been able to do this without them. I want to say hello real quick to Joshua in Houston, Eleanor in Quebec, Samuel in Canada, Claire for watching in California. Big thank you to Mimi Grace for the wonderful notes in the chat before class. We're so glad that so many of you have enjoyed this Earth Science class and taken this journey with us. Shout out to Elliot and Rosa in Michigan, to Sierra Kylie, Ava, Zaki um, from Canada, and so many more in, in the chat. Thank you, you guys. All right, today's going to be fun. We're going to quiz you on all the stuff we've learned through across the entire course. That's a, a lot to cover. And these questions will not be particularly easy, miss some of them. We, we, do, we do have a couple more challenging questions sprinkled in. So you can have your notes with you and to reference as you're answering. And go to itempool.com slash sciencemom slash live if you're watching this live as usual. If you're watching the replay, you can participate in the quiz as well by just clicking on the link below the video at science.mom. Are you ready? I think I'm ready, science mom. We also have some birthday shout outs. So uh, after every single question, I'm going to just give a couple birthday shout outs to summer birthdays because I had a birthday in the summer, or I, I still do. And <laughs> I remember when I was in school thinking it was kind of unfortunate because everyone else would get birthday parties during school and I never did. So. Summer birthday celebration time. <laughs> All right, head on over to itempool.com slash science mom slash live where the action will be taking place. You can vote and participate. And if you're watching the replay later, there's a link down in the description where you can answer the same questions as you watch. And Claire says, we are ready for this. All Going right. down, Math Dad. Unbeatable. We'll see about that. So the real upset would be if Math Dad won. No, no. I mean, the video made it clear who the favorite <laughs> is in this. Videos don't lie, science mom. All right, let's start off with our first question. Shooting stars occur in the, so which layer of the atmosphere? The troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, or exosphere? Which one? Where do we see shooting stars? Mm -hmm. And I, we, we asked in the last email we sent out to send in summer birthdays, and I'm seeing a lot of them in the chat. It'll be too hard for us while we're doing it live to like reference and check. So um, hopefully you sent an email, and if you didn't, we'll just do a general wish you happy birthday at the end. Happy birthday to Noah from Ottawa, who turns has a birthday on May 12th, Good job, and to Noah. Rosie, who turns eight on June 7th. Well done, Rosie. Huh, okay, this one might not be stumping too many people. I'm seeing nope. lots of votes here. Oh, yeah. All right, well, you've got to give them an easy warm-up problem, right, science mom? All right. <laughs> Ever see a shooting star? The mesosphere is where they are. are. Yep, we knew we'd get they'd get this Coldest one. Coldest layer on Earth by far in the mesosphere. Good job, unbeatable science kids. Next question is one where you just type in the answer. The driest mm. continent on Earth is. Mm. Type it in. So we have to, which continent is 
the driest. The driest. So we've got seven continents. Which one will it be? I don't know. And a happy birthday to Isaac, who turns 11 on May 14th, and Ooh, to uh, Mira, having a birthday on June 22nd. Happy birthday. Isaac That's and exciting. Amira. Yeah. I always did feel a little bad for the summer birthday kids during the school year. They, nobody got to, to celebrate with them. But I'm sure there are advantages to the summer as well. This is true. Yeah. Khaled and you're all mellow today. Aren't you excited? He just had a big walk this morning, and now it's his snuggle up and take a nap time. Mm. So he's got lots of votes here. I, I wonder if they'll be able to spell it right. That, that this is almost a spelling test as much as it is an earth science I test. I suppose it is. Let's find out. All right, and Antarctica is correct. That's right. Nicely done, and I love that Marmosa is number third. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Antarctica is not so, only the driest continent; it's also the windiest and the coldest. Antarctica is a pretty amazing place. That's right, and it's Antarctic. Uh, there was extra C in there because the second most common answer was also Antarctica, just not spelled correctly. So, okay, kudos to you. We'll, we'll maybe give them that one. Even I'm, I'm being pretty generous, I think. So this third question is a little tricky, and if you want to reference the notes in page 32 to 35 when we talked about different climate zones, we mm -hmm. mentioned this. All right, so what animal can survive without food for 200 days if the blue whale Emperor penguin, Antarctic krill, marmoset, or a reticulated, reticulated python. Mm. And happy birthday to Matthew from Massachusetts, who turns seven on July 7th. Go Matthew. Golden birthday. And happy birthday to Gideon, who turns nine on May 28th. Happy birthday, Gideon. We have Ooh. a couple that are pretty close. And I will say several of these animals can go for a long time without food, longer than you or me but only one of them can survive without food for 200 days. You don't think I could do it? No. No? Oh. No. 200 days is a long time to be without food. 200 minutes is a long time. I need my food. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and finish and reveal because we do have a clear winter. Winter, winter. Antarctic oh. krill is correct. This was going to be when I stumped them on. You can't stump the unbeatable science kids, man. <laughs> now, Antarctic krill, they can actually shrink their body size down. So if they don't have food, and 200 days is such a long time, it they're is. able to essentially just digest their own bodies back, and their bodies just shrink down. And you can recognize that it's an older Antarctic krill if it has really, really big eyes, because the eyes don't shrink, but everything else will just shrink back down. Snakes and penguins can also go quite a while without food, but not 200 days. That's almost seven months at that yeah. point. All right. Our next question. The year without summer, so 1816, was caused mm -hmm. by which of the following? A mistake made by the Calendar Makers Guild? Lower amounts of radiation from the sun? The Earth's orbit being further away from the sun that year? Or the eruption of Mount Tambora in the previous year? This one, I think they remember, Math Dad. Yeah, this, this, this one has been a question before, but it's, it's still just such a cool fact. And it is. it's something for us to bear in mind because I think there's a lesson to be learned about how one big event like that can really alter the climate and have drastic effects even a year later. A whole year later, yeah. yeah. And we want to wish a happy birthday to Ryan from Canada, who's turning 14 on July 4th. And to Micah, who turns nine on May 23rd. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. All Let's right. Go ahead and reveal Looks the like answer. The, the votes are in, and they're unimpressed with the difficulty of this one. <laughs> All right. The, the eruption of Mount Tambora it, it is correct. So when the math dad in disguise said that they wanted science kids to be squished into the ground, this is an example of them squishing math dad into the ground what? because they totally smashed that question. Good job, you I'm guys. Just, I'm just letting them get ahead. My victory will be all the sweeter for it. Here's a true or false question. There were no ice caps on Earth during the age of the dinosaurs, also called um, the Cretaceous. Ooh. You have the Jurassic, the Triassic, Cretaceous, all called, you know, dinosaurs were around in all of those three eras, but really the Cretaceous is when you just had tons of dinosaurs. All right, so it's either true or it's false. And a happy birthday to Ian, who has a birthday on June 1st, and to Brayden, who has a birthday on June 1st as well, and McKenna who turned, has a birthday on August 9th. Sweet. Happy birthday, you guys. Matt, at our house, we had the rule, no growing. That was like, that was the one rule I gave my kids and they never listened. They it, never listened. It, it, it became quite a fun joke. They were very happy anytime that they outgrew their clothes. Like, look at me, dad, I'm growing. Oh, they're rebels. Look. This is so close. Oh, this one's really close. Oh my goodness. <gasps> mm. I'm gonna win, so hence mom, I'm gonna win. Uh, let's find out. 
Yes. Oh, yes. Man. I don't know how proud you should be, Matt. Dad. That was really close. So this is true. And you'll remember that when we talked about geologic time, we talked a little bit about how in Antarctica, you have fossils of fern trees and plants all the way under the ice cap. And we know that Antarctica was not um, that far away from the South Pole during the age of the dinosaurs. It's not like Antarctica was up by the equator. It's that the climate was different. It was so much warmer. There was no permanent ice cap on Antarctica. Sure, there might've been like up in the really high mountains, there might've been a glacier here or there or some ice here and there. But, but there's a long period of time without an ice age. Yes. So the ice ages are not the norm for the planet. And an ice age is any time when we have permanent layers of ice. Yeah. Ice age is the norm for human history. That, that, but, that's right. But yeah, and we are in an ice age currently. You're giving hints now, Matt, Dad. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, no. I was giving hints. <clears throat> Which of the following statements is false? Currently, 3% of Earth's land is covered in ice year-round. During the last glacial maximum, so 21,000 years ago, sea level was almost 400 feet lower than today. We are currently in an ice age, or ice covered 25% of Earth's land during the last glacial maximum. Which of these is false? All of the statements is true except for one. And we want to wish a happy birthday to Marlon in Philadelphia, who turns nine on July 17th. Happy birthday, Marlon. Mm -hmm. And Kiara and Savannah are sisters with July birthdays. Kiara is turning 10 and Savannah is turning eight. Happy birthday, Kiara and Savannah. Indeed. Ooh. We do have a clear winner here, Matt. I don't know that it's so clear though. I'm, the different categories are getting votes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish and reveal. Uh, these ones, I know it's nice to have just a little bit more time so you can really read them and think about them, but we're gonna go ahead. All right. Ooh, this one, this one stumped oh, oh, some people. Oh, oh, oh. All right, let's talk about this. Yeah. So currently, 3% of Earth's land is covered in ice year round. That is actually not correct because it's about 10% of Earth's land that's covered in ice. And if you just think about it, like think about the, the globe and then imagine Antarctica. Is that only 3% of the surface of the Earth? And then you add in Greenland and then, you know, glaciers. Like, ooh, that's more than 3%. Now, maybe 3% of Earth's surface could, could be covered in ice if you count yes. the oceans if as well. If you're counting the oceans, it is about 3%. But if you're counting okay. just land masses, the land, then it's about 10%. During the last glacial maximum, sea level was almost 400 feet lower than today. That's true. We are currently in an ice age. That's true as well. And ice covered 25% of Earth's land during the last glacial maximum. That is also true because the ice sheets extended all the way down into, so, into the United States. So and this through Russia. So sea level being 400 feet lower, that's because all the extra water ended up- In ice. In ice on land or on sea. And, oh, wow, so that's yeah. re re really interesting. So right. don't don't let Math Dad get too proud of himself, you guys. Oh, it's inevitable science, Mom. So you've gotten two and they've gotten <laughs> five so far. That's that's not exactly- The, the tides have turned. Neck and neck. In a given year, global carbon dioxide levels will be highest in which month? January, April, July, or October? And if you have your notes, there is a page in the notes that has a graph. You can take a look real fast and it will show you which month is the highest. You're gonna have to give them a lot of time for them to be able to find that though. They're, they're good at searching, but I don't think they're that fast. Uh, we we have a couple birthdays real fast. Happy birthday to Bowie, who has a birthday on August 18th, and to Ibrahim, who turns six on August 26th. We hope you guys have great birthdays this summer. Indeed. You ready to reveal the answer, Math Dad? I think we're there. Let's do it. April is the correct answer. Oh, another one where Math Dad stumped them. I can't believe it. Come on, USK, you guys can do this. <laughs> oh. Let's. Uh. Let's, yeah, let's take a let's look talk about that one for a moment. Super fast. So this is on page da, 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 dun, 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 page 45 of the notes. And I know the resolution is not going to be super great, but I'm just going to kind of point right here. You see how carbon dioxide concentration goes down and up every year in this cyclical pattern. And the pattern is such that you actually get the highest concentrations around around April because of all of the decomposing leaf matter in the Northern Hemisphere that starts to sort of decompose in the spring. And then through the summer, there's a lot of photosynthesis and it goes down. And then in about October, that's when it gets the lowest. And then it starts rising up again during the winter. 
All right. So yeah, April. April. All right. We'll so remember that. five three math dad, you're still really far behind. But we see where the trend is going though, I think. Nope, nope. <laughs> I think that will be the last question where we stump anybody. The rest, they're all gonna get right. All right, which of the following statements is true? Obsidian is a volcanic rock that contains so many pockets of air it will float on water. Mount St. Helens is the result of a divergent plate boundary. Mm. A solar system is larger than a galaxy, or Antarctica has active volcanoes and a lava lake. So only one of those statements is true. Select it. Only one of those statements is true. And can I tell them a page to look at Math Dad? You can give them a hint. They need all the help they can get. I think so. <laughs> I don't think so. There is a hint on page 67 if anyone wants to take a look at page 67. And now we want to give a happy birthday to Elise, who has a birthday at the end of July, and to Luke, who is turning 10 this May. Happy birthday, you guys. Happy birthday. I love watching these bars grow, the, the answers coming across the screen. It's, just, it's so fun. So. Yeah, I, I love watching the... <laughs> the <chat. laughs> we're, they, we had a great comment here from Malcolm who says, we're going to give him a false sense of security and then we're going to crush him. Oh, Malcolm, I'm watching you. <laughs> Let's finish and reveal. They got it right. Woo! Antarctica does have active, active volcanoes and there are only five lava lakes in the entire world where you have a volcano that has an active pool of lava up at the top. And one of them is in Mount Erebus in Antarctica. So good job. Nicely done. Most of the fresh water on Earth, the water that is not salty, most of it is where? Underground, frozen, or in lakes and rivers? And while those answers are coming in, we're going to wish a happy birthday to Miles from Los Alamos, New Mexico, who turns nine at the end of the month. Happy birthday, Miles. And also happy birthday to Van, who turns nine on the 11th of May. Happy birthday, guys. Whoa, this is close, Science Mom. Two this, categories are getting a lot of votes. Two categories are getting a lot of votes, and I bet I know which ones they are, but one of them is a clear leader. I've got my fingers crossed that it's the correct one. Should we find out? Let's do it. Let's find out. Frozen is the correct answer, and oh no, they, they said underground. underground. So this is a little tricky, because we had a really similar question a week or two ago that said most of the liquid fresh water on Earth, and mm -hmm. for liquid fresh water, Absolutely. You're right. Most of it's underground. But if you're just looking at water that you could use for, for drinking, most of the fresh water is ice. That's right. So don't let it go to your head. Another point math dad. for math dad. Let's just watch them build. <laughs> All right, USK, squash them on this next one. How long is a day on the moon? Is it 24 hours? 29 days, which is about 707 hours, or is this a trick question because the moon doesn't have days because one side's always facing the sun and the other side's always dark? Ooh, I Which really one? like this question. So this is a good one. Will you feel appropriately squashed if they knock this one out of the park? Uh, I'd be impressed. I don't think they're going to get it right. Oh, I think they are. I think they are. And while answers are coming in, we want to wish a happy birthday to Colby, who turns 12 on August 8th, and to Ryan, who has a birthday on May 10th. Happy oh, coming birthday. up soon. Yeah. Happy birthday, Ryan and Colby. Ooh, I don't know. So I think they know the answer here. How long is a day on the moon? And just so we're clear, what is the definition of a day? Um, that's the amount of time it takes from sunrise to the next sunrise, okay. or from sunset to the next sunset. All right. Then, oh, wow, those are two Ooh. close categories. Oh, no, they just switched and got tied. They no. did switch. Interesting. No. Now I'm kind of nervous. Come on, you guys, you got this. And we reveal the answer to be B, 29 days. So th that is correct. That so, is. So why is it not 24 hours? Because the, the moon is rotating more slowly than the Earth. On the, on the Earth, we have a day that is 24 hours. It takes 24 hours for us to rotate all the way around and go from sunrise to the next sunrise. But the moon, one side of the moon is always facing the Earth. We call that, that being, true. It's tidally locked with the earth so that the same side is always facing the earth. So, and be because of that, a day on the moon, it takes about as much time as one re revolution of the moon around the earth, which was 29 and a half days. Yeah. If the, if the moon didn't have days because one side was always facing the sun, the other was always dark, then the moon would always look the same to us. It would either always be a full moon or 
always be a dark moon. Like I, I can't even think of a way that that would work. But when we see the, the moon change where sometimes it's a full moon, sometimes it's a half moon, what we're seeing is the day changing on the moon. No, actually, it wouldn't change from our point of view at all. We just see different parts of the moon instead of the same face. Oh, okay. if, if, if the moon if the were moon facing was, this, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's kind a, of a weird thing to think about. It is, it is. All right, they got that one just barely, just okay, barely. But they got it right, Matt said. <laughs> that's it, you know what, science mom? It is time for me to power up. No, that's you powering up. Oh, no, she stole my power up, guys. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I tried. I had no idea that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a fun question. Would you rather be able to fly or turn invisible? No correct or incorrect answer to this one. Just your opinion. If you could pick, and let's say that you could do one of them for, for a week, would you rather fly or turn invisible? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. But let's do a couple birthday shout outs while they're thinking about this. All right. Happy birthday to Henry, who has a birthday in mid-May. To Finn, who turns 10 on July 29th, sorry, June 29th. Happy birthday, Finn and Henry. Yeah. Ooh, this is a kind of a close one here. 59 to 53 is the current vote. Um, I'm guessing that flying is going to be in the top. You think flying, what will come ahead? That's, of that's my guess. Uh, Both but, would but what be would really you say? Cool. What, what would you say before you answer? Oh, I would say flying, just because it would be so neat to be able to fly and see things. I, I would from also like a, yeah. say flying that would be more practical, I think, but... Okay, and 66 to 62, it ended up being a really close. close vote. And yeah, invisibility would be a ton of fun as well. Flight would be a ton of fun, although they actually both come with a lot of problems. Like, would you be able to see if you were invisible because you, a light wouldn't be able to bounce off the cones of your eyes, it would just go right through. Would you be blind? And if you were, could fly, I mean, would you be any stronger? Because if you land, you break bones, if you're not super <laughs> careful, I, it, it gets a little complicated. Or get bugs in your face. You yeah, have to wear goggles yeah. while you're flying. That's right. All right. Moving on. <clears throat> the most abundant gas in our atmosphere is blank. Just type it in. And while you're typing in the answer, we're going to wish a happy birthday to Carter, who turns 11 on May 18th, and to Nathan, who has a birthday on July 1st. Happy birthday, Carter and Nathan. Happy birthday. Okay, science mom. Do you have any more power-ups, Easily. Um, no, I want to... I wanted me to power up, though. I don't know how you stole my power up there. <laughs> All right. Ooh. There's definitely one answer that's getting more maybe, entries than Maybe they do the know the answer. They're probably just saying marmoset because they don't know the answer. No, they definitely know the answer. <laughs> this this is, this well, is one that oh. I'm sure they know, and the answer is nitrogen, and they got it. <laughs> nitrogen is correct. Marmoset came in second, though. <laughs> <laughs> 80, <laughs> close to 80% of our atmosphere is nitrogen. And that's something we went down and did a survey near Las Vegas and asked a lot of adults from all over the world a few years ago what they were breathing. And, and most people didn't know. They had no idea. And in fact, they, they thought it's probably about half oxygen, half carbon dioxide. And Which would be deadly. It, it, it would. Well, that's yeah. what Venus, what happened to Venus, right? It got too much carbon dioxide. Yeah. Greenhouse gases just went through the roof, the, the greenhouse effect. And, you know, that cycle kept making the planet hotter. All right, question 13. What is the softest mineral? Calcite, gypsum, talc, or corundum? I'm gonna run grab the other ice pack. Okay, it's, we live, currently we live near Nevada, um, Las Vegas, Nevada, and our garage is starting to get warmer, so we have to put ice packs under our computers so they don't overheat. So while Math Dad ran to grab that real fast, I'm gonna give a quick birthday shout out to Abigail, who is turning 11 on June 21st. Happy birthday, Abigail. And I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the answer. They smashed it, Math Dad. What? 74 people said talc and talc is caressed. Correct, that is the softest mineral. Is, is talc used in baby powder? Yes. Yep, it sometimes is. That's gotta, gotta be pretty soft if you're gonna put it on a baby. So it makes sense. Gypsum on the Gypsum? mineral hardness scale is the next softest. So I think, think sheetrock, uh, calcite is, is the next after that. Also pretty soft. Corundum. Corundum, though, is pretty hard. It's the second hardest on the mineral scale. Very. And it's, uh, what was it, rubies? Ruby and emerald. And, and emerald, yep. or, or sapphire. sapphire, rather. Yep. Good job, guys. Okay, let's see if they know this question about the atmosphere. 
Uh-oh, except I've got a ghost letter. The ozone layer is located in which layer of the atmosphere? Pardon the typo. And Claire got says, we are mid-comeback. They are. Way to go, unbeatable science kids. They're doing all right. They're, they're doing all right. They'll just make their fall that much more sweet. Uh, happy birthdays. For this question, we want to wish a very happy birthday to Owen, who has a birthday on August 11th, to Adley, who has a birthday on August 14th, and to Aileen, who has a birthday on August 15th. Happy, happy birthday. birthday, Owen, Adley, and Aileen. We hope you guys have great birthdays this August. Okay, maybe, maybe they're getting this one right based off of... Maybe they're stomping you into the ground, <laughs> Math Dad. They're getting... They really know this one. Ozone layer is in the stratosphere. But I taught them the song, so may, maybe it shouldn't count. Maybe I should get the point. <laughs> no? You, you, you can be proud. <laughs> All right. Proud that you're getting stomped. Clouds that form rain will have which of the following Latin roots in their name? Stratus, mm. cumulus, nimbo, or alto? So it's Latin words. I, I don't actually speak Latin. Who spoke Latin? Um, science mom, Jody. Oh, the I yeah. didn't I didn't know that. I was just historically oh. thinking like Rome. Well, the, science mom Jody knows the, a lot of Latin. But. The Roman Empire and science mom Jody have a lot of Latin. Go, go on, <laughs> both, both powerful <clears throat> and epic. So, um, happy birthday to Tyler, who will be eleven on August sixth, and to Josh and Abby, who are turning ten on June twenty eighth. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Hope Ooh. you guys have great birthdays. So this one's kind of close. Well, it was close now. Suddenly. It's not so close anymore. <laughs> I think they remember this one. Nimbo is correct. So cumulonimbus clouds, stratonimbus clouds, or nimbo stratus. Um, those, anytime you see the word nimbo, that means rain. No, I think the word cumulo. Like uh, cu what are you thinking? Cumulonimbus. And so both of them show up in that one. So I think I, that's like the big rain cells, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the rain that we see comes from those clouds. Nice, nicely done. This one is is a good one. And if you think back to the cloud in a bottle the demonstration that we did, that will help you remember and recognize the answer. If, if the air is in a if the air in a pressurized room was humid, a sudden drop in pressure would result in condensation, evaporation, temperature rising, or temperature falling. It could be all of them, none of them, which Will it be? Spoiler alert, it's not all of them. That would make no sense. You don't think temperature can no. rise and so, fall at the same time? No, so you've <laughs> got to pick you gotta pick two of them. Try and pick the correct two. Mm -hmm. And while you're thinking about that, we're gonna wish a happy birthday to Ryan from Canada, who will be 10 on May 10th, another golden birthday. And to Rory, who turns 10 on July 20th. Happy birthday, Rory and Ryan. That's great. So do you remember the cloud in a bottle experiment, Math Dad? I we, do. We used the used bike the, pump. We used the bike pump. Pressurized it and then released it. Released and the suddenly pressure. there was a cloud in the bottle. That's that's the hint could, that I just tricked Math Dad been, into giving you. Could have been like witchcraft. I don't I don't know what caused this. <laughs> yeah, um, physics. Physics is what oh, caused it. Oh, they Dad. got it right. Yes, when we released that that pressure, we got a whole bunch of condensation all at once, and that condensation was caused in part by that drop in temperature. So if you were in a room that was pressurized and all of a sudden, poof, the door opened and the air was humid, you would get condensation That's and right. a drop in temperature. And a general principle, higher pressure means higher temperature, lower pressure, lower temperature. So yep, those usually go yep. hand in hand. Yep. When you get to high school chemistry, you'll learn about something called the ideal gas law and see exactly why that's the case. All right, when a fluid moves faster, what happens to the pressure? It increases, it decreases, or it stays the same. And Claire says we are so winning this. They so are, Math Dad. Aren't we almost tied? No, I think we've about no. got. I, it's got to be close. No, I think I think at this point it's like they have thirteen points and you have three or four. I forget exactly. Huh, I, I don't know. It might be a little closer. We'll, we'll have to go to the replay. We want to wish a happy birthday to Joshua, who turns six on July 21st, and to Samuel, who turns two on August 27th. Happy birthday, Joshua and Samuel. Happy and birthday. Now let's finish and reveal. And the pressure drops is correct, but the pressure increases is what most people said. Uh -huh. So don't get too oh, overconfident, so, though, man, so Dad. Let's, let's explain this real quick. So this is the Bernoulli principle, the first um, activity that we did with the ping pong balls and other things. We talked about how when the air goes around a curved space, 
it speeds up to go around that curved space and you get low pressure. And that low pressure, like above an airplane's wing, that's one of the things that helps airplanes to fly. So any type of fluid, if it's water or air, if it starts going faster, you're gonna get lower pressure around that fluid. Bernoulli that's principle. Right. Crushed him on that one, science mom. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, time for time for a comeback on this question. Hurricanes in the Atlantic are most common in Ooh. which month? So is, it, so is it January to March, April to June, July to September, October to December? So we have the four quarters of the year. When are the hurricanes the most common? And I am going to really fast give them a little hint because we have a graph <sighs> on page. Oh, just kidding. We don't have a graph. But we talked about it on page 25. <laughs> If they took notes, I suppose. Yes, then, if, you, then if, you took, look. if you took notes, we talked about it on page 25. Yeah. Well, it's strange the way that one category always seems to grow at the end, and it's often the right answer. I don't, I don't know how to explain that. No. Quick happy birthday to Lydia in Connecticut, who turns 11 on July 14th. Happy birthday, Lydia. And I did see that our moderators put in some other birthday requests in the, in the notes. So we will go... We will go through those at the end. Let's finish and reveal. All right. The answer is July to September. Nicely done. And yeah. if you if you think about it, knowing that hurricanes need warm water to form, the water's temperature has to be warm. Uh, when is the water going to be the warmest? Late summer. Late summer. Yeah. Because it, you know, even if it's nice and warm in April, in April, the water's not going to be that warm because it takes time for it to warm up. And so it's at the end of summer, you know, in August, that's when the water's the warmest. My guess is the people on the East Coast of the U.S. would have known that, whereas we, we don't actually experience the hurricanes here. So I, I didn't know that before this class. Matt, Dad learned something new. I did. Good job. The prevailing winds that blow from east to west above the equator are known as... The westerlies, the trade winds, the jet stream, the Gulf Stream. What are these famous winds called? All right. So uh, on the birthday front, we have Z Xander turning 14 on May 17th. Happy birthday, Xander. Happy birthday, Xander. And Jackie turns uh, has a birthday on August 12th. Happy birthday, Jackie. Mia will be 14 in August as well. Happy birthday, Mia. And let's go ahead and reveal Oh, no, the no, 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 no. These answers are still coming in. Let them think some more. I see the bar is moving, science mom. I don't th I, I think we're going to keep the same pattern. I think we have a clear winner. You think uh, we're going to have an upset? <gasps> there is an upset. Uh oh. Oh, it's, it's actually pretty close here, science mom. But okay, we've got a winner. Let's finish and reveal. And the correct answer is the trade wins. Yes. Or the Easterlies was the other name, right? Correct, correct. They're called either the Easterlies or the Trade Winds, and they circle the Earth right around the equator. And then above the Easterlies or the Trade Winds, you have the Westerlies, and they go the other direction. I was, I've always been a little confused about that when they talk about it's an Eastern wind. Wait, is it coming from the East or is it blowing to the East? Like that, that, the, the terminology is a little vague just from the name I could try to argue that both ways it, it is it can be confusing but where the wind comes from is where the where the name comes from so nicely done and then the jet stream stream is a current up high in the in the air and the Gulf Stream is actually an ocean current that's right we, we did learn about that next question with greenhouse gases uh -oh. without without greenhouse gases there would be no life on earth true or false and while those answers are coming in, we will do some other birthday requests that our moderators have put into the chat real quick. Happy birthday to Jesse, who has a birthday on June 13th, to Yana, who has a birthday on June 23rd and is turning nine. And then Cassidy has a birthday on August 14th. Happy birthday, Cassidy. Andy in Alaska has a birthday on May 23rd. And Annabelle has a birthday on June 2nd. Mimi Grace has a birthday on August 17th. And her sister Abby's birthday is on August 1st. Happy birthday. And then Lily Games turns nine on May 21st. Happy birthday, you guys. Lots of summer birthdays. That was kind of fun. I'm suddenly wondering if I know the answer to this question. You know what? What we should have said as a qualifier is there would be no life as we know it on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we said true that we wouldn't have life on Earth. Um, yeah. Pretty much yeah. anything here on the, the surface. So we, we would be too cold. 
We would be too cold. Well, and let's let's think about it. So what are the greenhouse glass gases? The three greenhouse gases. Go ahead and type it in the chat if you're watching live. What are our three greenhouse gases? Well, give them a second. Here, might as well do another birthday shout out. We'll do a couple more birthday shout outs and I'll take a look at the chat. We can do that. All right, quick happy birthday to Hannah from Ottawa who turns 11 on July 7th. To Owen, who um, Paige is turning 13 this summer. To Quinn, who has a birthday on August 6th. And to Cassidy, who has a birthday on August 14th. And to Isla, birthday on June 20th. And Mason, birthday on also on June 20th. All right. Are we, oh, we switched cameras? Okay. And I see Mary says CO2. Corinth says CO2 and methane. There is one that we're forgetting. So carbon dioxide and methane are absolutely greenhouse Ooh, I gases. I know the other one. And KNH Robo has it. It's water. So if there were no greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, that would mean no carbon dioxide, no methane, no water. We need water. We do. So definitely we would not have life as we know on Earth without carbon dioxide, methane, and water. But even if you just took away carbon dioxide, so there was no carbon dioxide whatsoever, mm -hmm. our life on Earth right now is carbon-based, and the foundation for that life is photosynthesis. And if all the carbon dioxide was gone and you didn't, couldn't have photosynthesis, that would be a catastrophe. So there, there are some weird things down in the ocean, though, at the bottom of the ocean, those geothermal vents that are putting off a Ooh, lot of heat energy. And there yeah. are some creatures that actually live down off those. They're not using the sunlight at all. So And they're getting their, their energy from sulfur compounds. So that's a good point, Math Dad. Although if long-term Earth had no carbon dioxide, methane whatsoever, um, it probably all the water would probably freeze completely solid. So then you wouldn't have you wouldn't have those either. So, and if we if we said all greenhouse gases, so if we're taking away the water, then, <sighs> then there'd be no oceans. Okay, so so I'm I'm standing by our true true answer, even though you can argue it the other way. And here's kind of the cool thing about just about learning and about questions. If you can make a valid argument, I'm totally willing to change my answer. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah, if you write a valued argument for why this question was actually false instead of true, if I go through and your logic is sound and I agree with your points, like what Math Dad said here about uh, thermal vents, then I think, okay, maybe that answer was not the way I wrote it. Well, and as scientists, this is absolutely essential. It, almost if you get nothing else out of this class, just learn that we don't know everything and sometimes we're wrong. We need to be willing to change our minds about things. Yeah. See well, what does the data actually show us? Otherwise, if, if we think we know everything in advance, we're not really doing science. So, math dad in the chat, they're saying all the defeat dances, all the defeat dances. Do you know what I, I saw the request? They wanted me to sing them a song. I'm <laughs> oh, singing no. a song. I don't know the words. I don't know the words to this song. I'm singing it loud and I'm singing it long, but I don't know the words to this song. No, I don't know the words to this song. <sighs> That was just for you, Kara Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> and Jennifer Chandler, I saw several people requesting that. All right, real fast. I need to say something about biology, and then real quick, we will share um, Defeat Dances with you. So we are teaching a biology class in the fall, and it, make sure you're on our email list or follow us on social media for an announcement. We will have an announcement about how to sign up in just a couple weeks. So that is coming. And what was the other thing we were going to say? Remind me if I forget. Okay, yeah. Huh. Okay, now defeat dances. So we did film another little um, math dad versus science mom dance. So this, was, this was just a, a freestyle. It's like, yeah. all right, here's so the beat. Go. We, we had a lot of requests for hip hop. So we watched several tutorials about how to dance hip hop. And math dad said, well, should we put a question in there? Who does it better, science mom or math dad? And I said, no, they're both horrible. So <laughs> here you go. You're welcome. So there you go. Um, who do you think did it better? Someone who knows how to dance could definitely do it better than yeah, both of us, yeah. but we had fun. <laughs> That's right. Give the victory to Kaladin. That's right. Science puppy. What do you think? Could you do a better dance than that? I think he could. I think he could. <laughs> All right. And we will play two more, two more of the favorite math dances real fast, and then we will sing the, the atmosphere song and be done. We hope you guys really, we hope you enjoyed doing this class with us, and we're really impressed with all that you learned.
All right. We are going to play the run squat. And the other one that I saw requested most often was the chicken worm. And that's my personal favorite. <laughs> All right, try a worm. <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm going to practice that one, though. <laughs> And then real quick, last birthday shout out to Elsa, who turns 11 on July 12th, and to Keisha, her um, sister's birthday is in four days. So happy birthday, you guys. Happy birthday. Growing up fast. Hopefully we're, we're growing smarter as we grow up. That's right. We hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend. Work hard, grow smart, and we will see you soon. We're going to have other videos on the channel over the summer to help you just learn and explore the outdoors. And then again, we will have biology in the fall. We live in the troposphere, bottom of the atmosphere. All Earth's weather happens here in the troposphere. We love the atmosphere, keeps us safe and warm down here. Five fingers tear by tear in the atmosphere. Warmer than the air below, ozone layer had a hole. Airplane controls white like snow in the stratosphere. We love the atmosphere, keeps us safe and warm down here. Five hangers to my tear in the atmosphere. Never see a shooting star, the vessels feel is where they are. All the square on Earth by far. In the mesosphere, we love the atmosphere, keeps us safe and warm down here. By day, tear by tear, in the atmosphere, molecules extremely hot, radiation ions brought, space station for astronauts in the thermosphere. We love the atmosphere, keeps us safe and warm down here. Five layers tear by tear in the atmosphere. The exosphere is way out there, near the space it's such thin air. Satellites are everywhere in the exosphere. We love the atmosphere, keeps us safe and warm down here. Five layers tear by tear in the atmosphere.